the top right corner representing Solaris Gaming. It is the blue Zerg player just now getting here. We're ready to play some StarCraft though. He is Jon Snow. And his opponent's in the bottom left hand corner. She's ready to tear. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm waiting for it. All right. My darling. Tear in. Red player. Patron.com. Right, I'm Grant. sorry I couldn't save ASL. you, man. I really, really <laughs> tried. I really tried. I did. I won't sometimes, love it. Sometimes you run into those situations where what you're going to say dismantles in your head, and I'm like, but it was so clever. And then I was like, <laughs> but he'll catch on. He'll run the name. Yeah. Then, uh, you guys didn't hear, but then my producer, he's like, is that is that it? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't run that one. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll make up for it. We'll make up for it. Yeah. In uh, in some sick analysis, let's talk about merry-go-round tempo. This yeah. is a Zerg versus Terran map that Terrans fear. Mm. And you know though, um, Jon Snow is quite scary in this ZVT matchup. And my darling just came out of well, a match where I feel like it's a little different. Like the mindset of these two players at the moment. Jon Snow went out in his first match against Minigun in a weird fashion where he just went and said, Hey, I'm gonna make some lings, hopefully they'll get into your base and I'll win the game. Um and the way that my darling lost was that she was just doing her own thing, you know, playing the way that she plays. First game, she got destroyed by a three-gate by Arthur. Very aggressive play. And then the next game, it was like, you know, I'm going to switch it up and uh, do a 1-1-1 one, one, one on Overgrowth and then have it get shut down. So it was in two different ways, um, you know, where she's like, I've tried these different things and uh, it didn't really work. And you can tell that there were more legit strategies than, say, just like making a bunch of lings and uh, you Reaper are <laughs> living on the edge. One more hit, huh? Was it one more hit or two? I think maybe two. Yeah, but damn, very close. I feel like the uh, the no. mindset of my darling, depending on how she feels after games, is um, a lot more likely to be rattled than that of Jon Snow's mentality going into this game, at least. Yeah, I'd say in many cases that, that definitely is um, totally true. It does catch me a little, though, in, in regards to, like, that game versus Arthur... I don't know. I feel like you can you can let that one go. That's Arthur. WCS Premier League round of 16. The guy especially against like all in players that have a lot of really creative play with a lot of excellent micro. It's, mm -hmm. uh it's it's tough, man, but um we'll see if she can let it go. Yeah. Jon Snow did manage to force those reapers to go home early, which is super nice because I mean, my darling, she made three reapers. Three of them. Yeah. yeah. And they weren't go. aggressive at all. No, they're gonna have to only be aggressive when the Hellions come. But you know what? I, I am a little bit nervous about that for my darling because when you do use those reapers, you can usually tell a lot about a Terran player by how they utilize their first reapers, even if it's one, even if it's two, or whether it's like say three, how she made it. And, um, you know, it's just Jon Snow is pretty comfortable right now. I don't think he well, knows that there were three that were made, but... Yeah, he doesn't. Um, the one play that was... Uh, the reason my darling brought those Reapers home was because she actually counted the number of drones that were at the natural expansion, realized there was one too few, and knew that two Zerglings were heading to her natural expansion. So she quickly brought all of her Reapers home because she never saw the Zerglings. They, yeah. they just never appeared. And that was actually Jon Snow realizing that a second Reaper never showed up, and he was like, a second Reaper never showed up. The other Reaper is probably waiting for me. And so he never sent his two links in, actually, because he knew that the wow. Reapers had gone home. So a lot of, like, mind games actually went on there between the two of them. And it's, it's kind of cool, but my, the thing is, without any harass, exactly what you were talking about earlier, Temple, like, Jon Snow feels so comfortable. And he so does. with He's, these uh... Hellions and Reapers, she's got to get some damage done. She does, and she can't lose them either because right now what Jon Snow is doing is a very aggressive opener. He's decided not to drop any Evo Chambers, so he won't go for upgrades just yet. No Lair either. He dropped yeah. a Bailing Nest, so he's going to try to Bailing Bust my darling here, who does have quite a bit of these Hellions. And you know, uh, she's dropping an Armory as well, so she wants to go into Hellbat Banshee. I don't know. Um, 
how this is going to work. Uh, what do you I, think about Jon Snow, you know? Oh, uh, I love it. I yeah. love this opening tempo. Like, on this map, with this great creep spread, look at this. These three tumors are going to finish just in time. That's going to give so much more creep spread. He almost just tripled the amount of creep spread he has. But what I don't like is all these lings are sitting in the same place together. You want them to be spread out. They spread out too late. And my darling, she may be able to escape this. Whoa. Uh-oh. Big surrounds here from Jon Snow, and this pretty much solidifies uh, what you need. Like, when you are going for a bailing bust, you get those Hellions, and all of a sudden, it becomes so much stronger. What yep. is that home for Jon I mean, what is that home here for uh, my darling? Not only that, not only did he get all those Hellions for this Baneling bust, it's great to get the Hellions. Oh, wait, you're going for a Baneling bust? It's amazing to get all the yes. Hellions. Oh, wait, your opponent went for Cloaked Banshee? Banshees are horrible versus large numbers of Banelings and Zerglings, and my darling is about to see it firsthand. First hand indeed, don't even need to hit that bunker as the Banelings run over to the mineral line of her and going right into that reactor of that factory. Double Hellion production or double Widomon production is not going to be able to be made anymore. But if she doesn't take too much damage, she does have the triple command center to make those workers back. But I don't know, Kibbles. Yeah, that's oh. a lot of low SCV. Oh. Oh. Oh, two, maybe three more SCVs go down. But look at that number in the bottom left-hand corner, folks. 29 in total. That 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 is recoverable, all things considered. Terran and three command centers, but it's not likely to happen. Not at all, and Jon Snow is not letting up. 30 more lings on the way, 13 banelings are being made, and this is going to be just too much for my now, darling to deal with, I think. I don't like the baneling decision, actually. The uh, mules were dropped on the low ground, which was super, super greedy, and my darling does need to start mining again in her main base, but with three banshees, banelings will be able to all be oh. used up in fairly good fashion. Command Center is not able to be landed, and now here comes 4th of July in September. Wow. Hot damn, go the banelings. Just too much damage is being done here, Kibbles, and I don't think that she's a very recoverable situation. Yeah, you could put Heart in this situation versus Shigua, and Heart would not actually be able to come back. Mm -hmm. So, neither right now is my darling. Uh, guys, that's going to be it for game number one, but my darling, I think a lot of things just went against her favor there. A, a lot of unlucky factors. Like, not only did the Hellion get Serana, but her opponent was going for a perfect build order counter. Um, so, I think game number two is going to be much more uh, easily contested. Yeah, well, it's still going to be going on right now. My darling does have triple command center, but it's just going to be one of those situations where it'll take her a very long time in order to get back into it as Jon Snow decides to drone. Going to keep on going. Uh, he has spore crawlers up at every one of his bases and is deciding to go into Muta. So, there's really nothing that can contest Mutalisk and when they get onto the map as there are no engineering bays out um, They're all blown up in the attack we made for walls and there's also no uh, Viking yet. It's only gonna be these Widow mines and the Banshee's gonna try to do some Damage even getting taken out. Yeah, m my darling a little bit shook up It seems she didn't actually quite she went for the cloak on that instead of pulling it away with the mm -hmm. spore crawler obviously able to detect so um, yeah, man, I think she's. Just, I think my darling's feeling a little bit shook up after this game because, I mean, I remember earlier a lot of SCVs not mining. Will she be able to clear her head moving into game number two? I think that's a really big question. I'm also wondering what map she's going to go for because at this point, if she watched Jon Snow play in his first match, obviously, like, a very cheesy oriented player. And I yep. think my darling just needs to be prepared for that, be prepared to hold um, in the early stages of the game, move into the late game, and maybe she'll be able to take him on. Yeah, well, uh, I like the move here from uh, Jon Snow, creeping up that natural, delaying the amount, uh, well, delaying uh, this command center from ever landing again. But although my, my darling yeah. is continuing to make SUVs three at a time, she would really like to be mining from both as uh, she does start to uh, saturate this main. And you don't want to be dropping mules heavily in the base that you're saturating first, as you're going to be running out and mining out very shortly. So. She does need to go ahead and try to be mining from these bases as soon as possible, but in the meantime, man, Jon Snow has just been droning up like a madman. And guess what is on the way? Uh, we got a few Mutalisks. And uh, there's only two Widow Mines here, I believe, so you do need three. I be I think it's three Widow Mines in order to m totally blow up a flock of Mutas. Yeah, it is. And, I mean, the one thing that we can give maybe right now to my darling in her favor is that... Um 
Hold on, I forgot actually what it was. Yep, it's <laughs> okay. Not, yep. No, it's, well, there's there's not much is is what I'm kind of saying there with my little joke. But here come the mutilus. She has no turrets. She actually has nothing that can shoot up except those two widow mines. Gee. Uh, the night. What does he say? The night is my watch, or some something like that. <coughs> Forget. So, like, so I was just like, I the don't watch know, man. is on the walls. There we go. <laughs> He'll say something like that. Yeah. Damn, man! Now I gotta watch the seasons again because we got a long time until the next one. We do. We very long. Yep. Time. Peter Dinklage voiced Ghost in. Uh, Destiny. In Destiny, I don't know why he doesn't want people to know that. Yeah. So we should just spread the word as gamers <laughs> and be like, guess it's our what? Responsibility. Peter Dinklage is shy that he's a gamer or doing gaming stuff. Not like Usain Bolt, who apparently is a huge gamer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wasn't right. like Dave Chappelle a big WoW head? Was it like Chappelle? He used to play um, WoW like quite a bit. Maybe. Dave Chappelle. This is true. He actually Robin has Robin Williams did. Robin Williams had a... A new a character, NPC named after him. He's a genie in uh, the new WoW expansion. Yep. yep. Oh, what's uh, he What's he say when you talk to him? It's something really funny. I actually don't know. I don't have the alpha or keeper beta. So. I never knew that my overlord could survive out here. Yeah, you have to be like super micro. It's because it's too far away and. The Marine actually has to walk away from the Zelnaga Tower over to that side. I never knew that. Yep. I feel like. If you have two Marines, though. Zerk player ever. Yeah, then you can get it. Or a Marine and an SCV. But let's take into account uh, what my darling is actually doing this game. It's a little bit different, right? Uh, one Rax Expand. Something that you don't typically see as much anymore. But um, it was double gas right after it. And she decides to drop her factory. And I'm wondering, I mean, it's. Pretty standard to do so, I'm assuming, right? Like, oh, uh, yeah, the gas is done. Ooh. How much gas has been mined? Whoa. Uh, quite a bit. Double this factory. This is a ridiculous amount of, of gas. Like, a ridiculous amount of gas. Yeah, um, and a second factory. There is a Blue Flame Hellion build that I remember from Wings mm -hmm. that used an opening similar to this. And it yeah. looks like it could be, like, a Blue Flame Hellbat or a Cloaked Banshee Hellbat. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess Blue Flame Hellbat, but uh, I'm not sure. Well, then. I haven't seen a build quite like this in a. Uh, it's definitely I don't think ever. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think it is. It's either Blue Flame Hellbat or Siege Tank Hellbat. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm wondering what the location of this uh, factory. She put the. She dropped down that barracks next to it, acting like she doesn't want to put an add-on on it. But I feel like. No, she is okay, building a tech said. lab for the for the factory. Aha. Uh -huh. This okay. is why I'm saying it's going to be Blue Flame or Siege Tank. We'll see. Yeah. Um, Either way, my darling's definitely going to go for some kind of wonky, likely all-in, if not super, super high-pressure strat. It looks like it might be Blue Flame. What do we got going on for Jon Snow? How's he going to yeah. hold up against this? Well, he's getting a Roach Warren and a Bailing Nest, once again, opting to skip out on his lair very early, not dropping Evos again. So we may see a very quick Roach Bailing, as we do see Tenlings on the way. Speed has already finished, and you know... I am wondering how this will clash. I mean, it's going to be the Hellions able to use the armory in order to turn into Hellbats. Yeah, Jon Snow actually, actually scouted this. Uh, yeah. If you look at his vision, the Overlord came in, he saw the double factory. He doesn't know exactly what it is, but now with these fast Hellbats, I mm -hmm. think he's got an idea. Yeah, Roaches are on the way. They should be able to get rid of these. And uh, if he follows it up with a huge Roach Bane, what the... <gasps> oh, ah, Jon have? Snow's attacking his own queen. All right, Whoa, he stopped. don't do that. But he did it for a while. Yeah, that's actually pretty big. But he's, yeah, my darling. Oh, gonna lose another one of the, oh, another Hellion. And now, oh, she's, oh, she's been not having the best of luck with keeping her units alive. And now at home, she's gonna need to make Siege Tank, uh, yeah, Siege Tank already in production as well as Widow Mines, realizing that that attack did absolutely nothing. Uh, no workers were killed there. And not even that many roaches were killed. And not even one. Only two lings have been lost at all uh, for Jon Snow. Four Hellions and a Hellbat. Down for my darling. And, uh, yeah. Big Roads Bane coming, Kibbles. What's going to happen? Exactly. Like, one Siege Tank will not hold this. Two can. Um, well, how many Banelings are there? Yeah, it's not going to hold this. Mm -hmm. Two Siege yeah. Tanks could do it. We'll see how much yeah. damage these Roaches take beforehand. There's some Widow Mines, too. Oh, imagine if the Widow Mines get those hits of the lifetime where they just 
Yeah, these so, don't have the carapace here, right? So no, they introduce a randomization on it. We'll see. We'll see. He's burning them, and that is all oh, probably good wrote. enough. Yeah, he's gonna be able to get on top of the siege tank now with these roaches. And although the second siege tank will spawn, we're gonna see my darling ended up having to give up this low ground position. Yeah, it's really this is not rough for him. Yep, lots and lots of links coming here for Jon Snow to reinforce. SCVs are gonna try to hold down this supply depot. But this East Tank is putting in work. Yep, this is Trying similar to game one. Jon Snow is going to ramp up to three bases. We're going to see my darling pressed back, uh, pressured back onto just one. And yeah, this was a gamble, Tempo. I mean, it yeah. was it was smart because it was a gamble. And, you know, gamble is never a bad thing to do when you're down a game if you are not sure if you can take down your opponent. But... Big well. bailing connections on the supply depots, on the hell badge, Jon Snow marching in. Yeah, I think the roaches are going to be pretty much annihilated here, but it doesn't change the fact that, uh, man, Jon Snow, three bases right now. Yeah, and he's up to 47 drones to the 24. And this is a triple command center, actually, still. So that's actually not too bad, but you have to look at the bank of Jon Snow right now. You know, he hasn't spent any of that yet. As soon as he starts to mine from that gas, he gets his lair up. He's going to be in a pretty decent position, you know, he just has to drone up. There's really not much of a threat that he needs to fear at the moment. My darling, I think, could win this by rushing mech. Um, if she opts to go into mech, she could kind of turtle on three bases and, like, extend the game for a pretty long period of time. Yes. Which would get her a better chance for a comeback. You know, in the imminent future, she's in a rough position, but maybe she can get a lead in the long run. It looks like she is actually going to ramp up into mech. We see more factories going down. And this, uh, this, I think now she just needs to prepare for the follow-up Roche Hydra. That could be really hard for it all. Yeah. And, I mean, you have to understand that Jon Snow did sacrifice his economy in order to make that happen. He sacrificed his, the, the speed of his tech. So, yeah, that's not as bad as it seems, you know? I mean, yeah, she took a lot of damage there. That was actually a lot of damage. But if you look at the resources lost, uh, my darling has lost 5,000, while Jon Snow has lost 4.3K. So it's not like... You know, Jon Snow just totally blew over and then um, went back home kind of unscathed. You know, he yeah. lost quite a bit himself. So That's well, true. The clock Emeka, is on Emeka's now, is though. Yeah. Because Jon Snow scouted my darling space. You know, he's got this overlord just shown here. And he's like, you haven't killed this overlord yet. You still have nothing that can shoot up. Yep. So he's got a spire going down. And he's going to have around, you know, a thousand gas when it's complete. We're going to see 10 or so uh, Mutalis created, and I don't know, man. Is my darling going to be able to hold against 10 meters? She does not have an eBay. Oh, she does. She so does, she can't right? turrets. Yeah, she needs to realize what's going on at the moment. She has three command centers, but she is only really focusing on getting the mules down. And she needs some information. She needs to know exactly what is uh, coming her way. If she realizes that it was kind of like last game and that Jon Snow loves his mutas, then she would be able to uh, kind of prepare for it. And it seems like she's trying to, getting those turrets up. All Thor is on the way as well. So I do like that idea to kind of chill out, have three command centers, and go into mech. Because if you're able to get away with it, and your opponent doesn't uh, play it correctly, you can have a unit competition that a Zerg player is going to have a lot of hard, a lot hard time uh, dealing with. So Yeah, especially with uh, Jon Snow going for mutas. Like, Mutas was a bit of a gamble. He's like, all right, let me see if I can catch you off guard with no anti-air. But now there is a safety turret, and it seems like um, my darling is becoming more and more sure that Mutas could be a factor because we see more turrets going down. There's a Thor on the battlefield, more Widow Mines on the way. Yeah, the Mutas aren't going to be all that. In fact, two missile turrets in uh, in the main or in the natural here. Yeah, Jon Snow is actually playing this perfectly. This is how you go against mech. You realize that they're not going to be moving out until they are quite uh, situated. So then uh, Jon Snow is expanding all over the map. He took that fourth base. He's already dropping a fifth hatchery, spreading the creep incredibly well. And the mutas will make it so that she's never able to get to a third base without um, a good amount of Thors and even some slow pushing out with... Oh my god, Jon Snow does not give a damn. He's going to move on in with his mutas. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's a little bit too much damage. Like, my darling could have come back if she had played a perfect game, I feel, but she just lost tempo every single siege tank that she had. And Jon Snow can do this, man. He's on the four bases already. 
And look at the supply difference here. The drone count is up to 90. Yeah, I mean, my darling can actually just push into this right now. There is a Thor, a Marauder, and five Hellbats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> With a bunch right. of roaches even, right? Like, a big roach push if, if uh, Jon Snow yeah. decided to. I mean, he's going to in a moment. We are watching the Prime League of ASL. Players are more than capable of smelling a defensive opening in their opponent. And uh, I think Jon Snow just wants to make sure that behind this attack that he can macro his heart off. So he's going to kill these rocks, make sure he's got full mobility to defend this gold base when he takes it here in just a moment. And, uh, yeah. I think he's losing a bit of mutas, though. Uh, sec. But what is he going to do here? Is he going to Roach Bane again, do you think? Or... Uh... Just straight up roaches and barrel on through. Because yeah, Thor's are not the greatest against uh, those roaches as well. They're I think he's just going to bash his face against this wall. When he runs into this, there are no siege tanks. No there tanks. Be maybe big, one. Big issue. Like, there's yeah. nothing to scare Jon Snow. He's going to walk in and just be like, what, what is hurting me right now? Nothing. Why am I not dying? I don't understand. And yeah. he's going to realize that his opponent has one tank. Yeah, and I even like the mutas being here because they uh, Thors are gonna focus down the mutas even if there's only one in the sky and then a bajillion roaches on the ground, and the roaches get on in doing massive amounts of damage right now. And my darling really doesn't have the answer here. You know, the Thor, this is the last hope here, and guess what? It has just been obliterated. And without any siege tanks, roaches are gonna be reigning supreme on the ground. I don't feel that my darling has what it takes in this game here to deal with this ground force of Jon Snow. GG will be called Jon Snow.